Hello, and welcome again to the Audio Fundamentals class. This is episode five. We're going to talk about sound waves in the acoustic domain and what they do when they encounter objects, and we're also going to look a little bit at the relationship between wavelength and frequency. So let's take a little tour of what sound waves do in the acoustic domain. We wouldn't be able to hear sound at all if it weren't for this first thing the sound does in the acoustic domain, which is transmission. Sound is transmitted through air as well as other materials. Some materials transmit different frequencies better than others, so the partials that are higher or lower will get transmitted more or less through those materials. He's trying to pull. There are four other interesting things that sound does when it meets an object in the acoustic domain. So here's an example of reflection in the acoustic world. You've got the reflection off of this wall, that wall, the, the ground, and then all the combinations of those. If the wavelength of the sound is long enough relative to any obstacles in its way, it will simply go around them. That's called diffraction. So for example, if I go behind these bushes here, you can still hear my voice because the wavelengths of my voice are larger than these tiny branches and the sound waves just go right through them and around them. That's diffraction. Here's an example of the difference between reflection and absorption. I'm going to turn around and talk to the wall, and you'll hear the reflection of my voice. This is an example of reflection. You can hear what I'm saying pretty well. Now I'm going to grab this absorber that I took out of my studio. This has highly absorbent insulation stuffed inside under this cloth. Now I'll turn around and talk into this. You won't be able to hear this nearly as well because a large part of the sound is being absorbed. And there you have it. I guess we better move on. Resonance is when an object vibrates sympathetically with sound waves in the same location. So, for example, if I lean into this and talk into the acoustic guitar, as the notes that my voice is hitting go up and down and hit frequencies that either the strings are tuned to or uh, frequencies that correspond with harmonics on those strings, multiples of the frequency that they're tuned to, you can hear the guitar, maybe, ooh, you can hear the guitar resonating a little bit with my voice. But if you really want to make an acoustic guitar resonate, try a saxophone. <laughs> So let's go over that one more time. We've got transmission, reflection, absorption, diffraction, and resonance. Transmission being where sound travels right through. You heard that a little bit with the bass sounds with the car window. The treble sounds did not pass through the car window very well. Reflection, that's where sound reflects just like a mirror reflects light right off an object. Absorption, meaning that some or all of the sound or some number of partials of that sound are absorbed and converted to heat by an object. Diffraction is where a sound wave bends around an object. Usually, again, this happens with relatively large waves or bass sounds and fairly small objects. Resonance happens when an object tends to vibrate at a certain frequency and sound waves in the area contain partials of that frequency or multiples of it. Nearly always in the acoustic world, you've got lots of combinations of these things happening all at once at different spots. For example, there's also a phenomenon known as diffusion, which is reflection, but where different partials are sent in slightly different directions, spreading out the sound's ingredients. So what are sound waves exactly? They're changes in air pressure 
over a very small period. So much like when you see on the weather report, there's a low pressure zone moving in or something like that. It's like extremely tiny, extremely fast weather. One useful analogy is when a large group of spectators at a game or a concert do the wave. So you've got people standing up and down in place, and you can see the wave moving around. Each person is, in this analogy, loosely representing one air molecule in sound waves. Another useful analogy, if you've ever been angling, fishing, you have the bobber, which floats on the water. When it drops into the water, you see waves, and you can see that the water itself isn't moving that much, but the wave is traveling a long distance. Depending on temperature, humidity, air pressure, and several other factors, the speed of sound in air is usually about 1130 feet per second, or 344 meters per second. That's not instant, and if you're dealing with long distances, it can take quite a bit of time for sound to reach your ears. So, for example, if you are in an orchestra and you're playing the timpani, you're way in the back of the orchestra, your sound is going to reach the audience quite a bit later, in terms of microseconds at least, than the string players in the front. So you have to work harder to play in tempo with them. Whereas if you're playing in a string quartet, there's just four of you and you're all sitting right next to each other, it's easy. It's just as if the sound was instant. So that's why an orchestra has a conductor, so that everyone can see when the beat happens, rather than having to rely on their ears, which are not receiving the sound until quite a bit of time after it happens. Another thing I should point out is that all sounds move at the same speed, regardless of their frequency. This links right in with the idea of wavelength. If all sounds are moving at the same speed and low tones have a lower frequency, the only way it all works out is that lower sounds have longer waves. And all this boils down to longer wavelength is the same thing as having a lower frequency. A shorter wavelength makes the sound have a higher frequency. Both of those waves travel at the same speed, 344 meters per second, about 1130 feet per second. The frequency comes from the sound increasing and decreasing the pressure at a faster or slower rate. Sometimes people talk about bass waves taking time to develop. That's simply not true. If it were true, you would not be able to hear any bass on headphones because the headphone drivers are a millimeter or two from your ears. Bass does do very strange things in acoustic spaces, but that'll be for another video. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. I welcome any comments or questions that you have. I try to answer them all. And I would really appreciate it. If you enjoy the video, please subscribe, make it a favorite, um, do all those fun YouTube things. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.